Hello and welcome to our sixth video for the solutions unit, uh, molarity and dilution. In this video, we're going to be doing a little bit of math. It's fairly basic math, um, but you're going to have to have a calculator handy. So uh, make sure you're taking quality notes. Make sure you're ready to come to class with questions over things you don't quite get. Um, otherwise, here we go. Um, so the big goals here is sort of from additional objectives, since it's more mathematical uh, than concept related, is to calculate concentrations of solutions in the units of molarity, and to use molarity to calculate dilutions. First of all, um, the term we're probably all most familiar with is concentration. When we talk about something being concentrated, it's it's a comparative word. Okay, it's 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 based on uh, comparing to something else, something that's dilute contains a, a low concentration of solute. Okay, Something that's concentrated contains a high concentration of solute. So um, if you look at these two little graphics, it says it all. The solvent are the red dots and the solute are the blue dots. In a dilute solution, you have less solute per solvent. And in the concentrated, you have more solute per solvent. Okay. In chemistry, we'll use the units of molarity to better express concentration of solutions, and this gets used all the way through chemistry. It's, uh, the units of concentration are pretty common, um, so uh, straight to it, molarity means the number of moles of solute dissolved per liter of solution. And it is per liter, it cannot be milliliters, okay? For example, 2.5 uh, molar HCl hydrochloric acid means 2.5 moles of hydrochloric acid dissolved in one liter total solution. Now that solution can be made of water, it can be made of other things, in this case water, but the total volume of the entire solution, including the hydrochloric acid, is one liter. Okay, so um, when we do this, it's not as if we added 2.5 moles of hydrochloric acid to one liter of water. If we did that, the volume we would expect to increase. Okay, or there are some strange substances that will decrease when you put them in water, but that's a different story. <clears throat> The whole deal is it, your total solution volume is one liter. So first question, find the molarity of a solution that contains 0.35 moles of ammonium iodide in 100 milliliters of solution. So the first trick with this kind of question is to make sure that our units are, our units are in the proper uh, condition. So we have uh, moles of uh, 0.35 of ammonium iodide and we have 100 mils of solution. To quickly convert 100 mils to uh, liters, We'll just make one little simple move. We will say 100 mils. And we know there are 1,000 mils per liter. So that's 0 0.1 liters. Alternatively, you could have simply moved the decimal three places to the left. That's acceptable also. But for what we're doing now, this should work. And so when that math takes place, 0.35 divided by 0.1 yields 3.5. Sig figs, though, are still a real issue. So we would need to make sure that we understand this contains one sig fig. And since this is division, that leaves us with one sig fig in our response. So four molar sodium I, or, uh, ammonium iodide would be how I would express those words. Four molar ammonium iodide. Find the molarity of a solution that is made by dissolving 53.0 grams of potassium chloride in 500 mils of solution. Now in this setup, we've got mass instead of moles and then 500 mils instead of liters. Uh, the first things first, we're going to need to convert this value in mass to moles. And the way we do that would be with molar mass in the periodic table. Molar mass in the periodic table, and I'm going to approximate here, potassium is about 39, and uh, chlorine is about 35.45, but we'll say 35. So that's a roughly 74 for the molar mass. And then this value in liters should be 0 0.5 liters. Now I've got four sig figs here. And I've got three sig figs here, so my response we would expect should have three sig figs. Because when we divide these values, uh, first we'll convert 53 to moles, um, we should have three sig figs. So let's go ahead and pull the tab over, look at the math. First step in this one is to convert this mass to moles. Okay, And so when we add those values up, 74.551 is a little extreme. I think our periodic table would be slightly different. Uh, 53 divided by 74.551 gives 0 0.7109 moles, which we would round uh, to 0.711, divided by 0.5 liters, 
we get 1.42 molar potassium chloride. The next thing we're going to talk about is dilution. In dilution, what we're going to discuss is that in chemistry we, we often need to dilute the things we work with. We change molarity in order to use uh, either something for a smaller scale or for a different application. Um, but uh, it's a very common thing to do in chemistry, but we have to be clear on how we do it. Um, we can dilute a concentration, uh, concentrated solution with a solvent to obtain a molarity you desire. So, <clears throat> key idea, when you're diluting something, the moles of solute don't change. The only factor you're changing in dilution is the volume. So if it's moles per liter, this is what you're changing. This volume is what's changing. This is the staying the same. Okay? So, essentially what dilution is, is adding solvent. Okay? When you look at the whole process, you're adding solvent. And this often gets lost when we start working with math. So I want to emphasize now that what you're doing when you change uh, concentration is you're changing the volume of the solvent. And that's all. Okay? So, um... There's a, a mathematical formula that really all it is is proportions, but we set it up for you nice and pretty in this formula, M1V1 is equal to M, M2V2, where M1 mean, and M2 mean the molarity of the solution, and then V1, V2 mean the volume of the solution. Um, what you should notice isn't part of this equation is uh, the volume of the solvent. Okay, The V here is the volume of the entire solution, as is this. So what we don't see in this equation is, well, how much solvent did we add? It can be derived by comparing V1 to V2, but what you need to understand is the, the real thing that's changing, and then the respondent change is different. The real thing that's changing is the volume of this total solution, and then the responding change is the molarity. Okay? So, if you're preparing 100 mils of 0.4 molar magnesium sulfate from an initial solution of 2 molar magnesium sulfate, how much initial solvent would you use? So, or sorry, what was, should, really should say, what would the initial volume of the solution be? So we have to make 100 mils of 0.4 molar magnesium sulfate from 2 molar magnesium sulfate. Um, key idea here, volume can be in liters, but it doesn't have to be. You should notice that your volume on either side would cancel if you had data in both places. So as long as you understand that you used milliliters on the start side, you must finish with milliliters on the end side. So... Let's do this one. So our initial volume, our initial molarity is 2.0 molar. We don't know our initial volume. Our final molarity is 0 0.40 times our final volume. We'll go ahead and leave it in milliliters this time. So to solve, we'll solve for V1. V1 will be equal to 0 0.40 times 100. divided by 2. <laughs> so when we do this operation, we should see, first of all, sig figs. We've got two sig figs here, two sig figs here, one sig fig here. So we get one sig fig in our response. This is all multiplication and division. So um, mathematically, we're going to end up with 20 milliliters of our original solution. The way this question is phrased is bad. Um, this should say what was the initial volume of the solution because you really don't know how much solvent you used because you don't know uh, how much space your magnesium sulfate takes up. So kind of ignore that prompt and we'll clarify that in further questions. So it should say what was the initial volume of solution. So really what we started with, and just to clear this up, is you had 2.0 molar solution and you had 20 milliliters of it. And you ended with a 0.4 molar solution and 100 mils of it. What I want you to see here is what's changed, okay? You did not do anything with the magnesium sulfate that was in solution. You changed this value here, okay? And so, in doing, we can make a leap. We're assuming this is an aqueous solution then. If it's an aqueous solution, what's different from this question? From this side to this side, 80 mils of solvent was added. And we'll, let's go ahead and assume it was water, okay? So, nowhere in that prompt or anywhere did we say how much volume was added, but it's a valid question going forward in this unit. How much water did you add to make this happen? Okay. If 
you need 90 mils of 2.0 molar sulfuric acid, and all you have is 18 molar stock sulfuric acid, how much initial volume of solution would you need? I don't know why that keeps popping up that way. I apologize. So this is what we started with. 2.0 molar, and we had 90 mils of it. Notice we have mils here. We're going to have mils on our product side also. And then our product side, we have 18 molar solution and some unknown volume of it. <clears throat> oh, this is reversed. Let me repair that. So we're going to begin with 18.0 molar solution, three sig figs. And we're going to have an unknown volume of it. And we're going to make two molar sulfuric acid. And we're going to have 90 milliliters of it. So our solution should be in volume, and uh, our volume uh, unit should be in milliliters. And solving for this straightforward math, we're going to have one sig fig from 90, two sig figs from this, three sig figs from this. And let's see if we actually solve it right on the pull tab. Look at that. So in solving, in, in this arrangement, I've gone ahead and rearranged the formula to solve for V1 prior to entering my data, which is a, I prefer that method. Uh, it's up to you how you do it. Your math is your own, but I feel in this way you have a bit better understanding of how you solve the uh, question. What do we see has really changed here? We had 18 molar stock solution of sulfuric acid. We added some unknown volume of water to it to make it happen. In this case, we added 80 mils of water. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing what dilution really is. It is adding water. So in the next video, we'll talk about precipitation reactions and net ionic equations. It'll be the final video for the unit. Please make sure you come to class with questions regarding anything in this video. Make sure you're doing the math, practice packet, uh, pages, I believe, 12 and 13. Any questions, we'll see you in class. We'll see you on the next video.